I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. A group of elders in Nigeria, elder statesmen from all over the, from different segments of the Nigerian nation have written a long, detailed letter that governance in Nigeria is sinking. And these are respectable people. I saw it on um, Channels TV. Sheung was um, interviewing one of them. For me, they spoke up too late. They should have started speaking very early when the injustice of a rigged election took place. Some of us spoke up just like the time of the insurgency when they were blowing up churches and doing all kinds of things, attacking Christians in the north. I said on Quest TV that the northern elites are not speaking up. People like Gowan, people like um, who were, oh, a lot of them, Gowan, all the northern elites, they didn't speak up. And um, when it degenerated to a point, Jerry Ghana, when it degenerated to a point, all of them started complaining. But, uh, Dan Juma didn't speak on time because he had a $500,000 windfall from an oil block. He said he didn't know what to do with it. So when Nigerians are benefiting from the system or they have something at stake, they won't speak up because they feel that they might be clamped upon. But when elders don't talk, children will eat vultures thinking they are eating chicken. We, the elders of this nation, who are 60 years and below, I mean, and, and above, are partly responsible, if not wholly responsible, for the decay we are, and the stench our children are fighting against. Most of the people in the street are my children's age mates. Tragically, with the elders, our children are not in the streets, with the elites. They're not in the streets. But ironically, we are those who come and benefit in terms of contract and positions and appointment and all that. If you see Bangladesh, Muhammad Yunus has been brought to come and head the government. I'm not sure he said anything against the government. I'm not sure his children were in the streets. That's the tragedy of revolutions. I was in the airport trying to fly back to Ugeli, to Osubi. The airline that was booked was all their flights grounded around the country because they were owing. And the stress of driving in Lagos, 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 that they said they built, was so much on me, my blood pressure went up. I always travel with stuff to measure my blood pressure and to take medication. And I took medication at night. I got to the airport. As I stood for a long time, there was postural oh. hypotension. And if you add the medication I take to, to retard growth of prostate, that also contributes to hypotension. I was dizzy. I had to hold the trolley, begged them to give me a seat to sit down. 
if not for Pastor Abraham, that was around to help me buy another ticket, which is money, help me carry my trolley, my bags and all that. I was thinking, if I collapsed in this airport now, I would definitely die. There's no defibrillator, there is no ambulance, there is no good clinic in the airport. Even if there's clinic, you might have ill-trained people. The crowd will not know what to do because we don't know cardiopulmonary res res resuscitation. I will have died. I say, God, take me home safely. What contributed to this stress? A week before then, I was in Benin. From Ugeli to Benin by road was four hours. My wife recently went for convention. If you watch my video with her doing a go 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 go, I was giving her emotional orgasm before she travels. And then when I called her to the Abu go go go, she was very excited. So when she, she she took a long time to get to Benin, when I called her, she said, "Now I understand what you pass through." to reach Benin from Ugeli, something that is not supposed to be more than one hour. Bad roads. Bad roads in Lagos. All over Nigeria. People are putting me under subtle pressure. I should not talk. Why won't I talk? Why won't I talk? I should concentrate on economy, entrepreneurship, stupid people. How can economy be separated from politics? How can an elder statesman like me be afraid of speaking? Somebody said that uh, I made statements concerning churches and that they will frown at me. Bust you! And bust church people. You think at my age, I need church invitation to, to feed or church invitation to, to survive? No, 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 no. If my children want to take care of me, I will live very well. I'll go to Europe and stay. I don't need to be here. No, 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 I've trained them. No, 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 no. Church people, they are my least concern. I will say the truth. Don't invite me to your churches. We are so afraid. Shouldn't talk about politics. I have a master's degree from the social sciences in public administration. I made the best result, best graduating student at the age of 56. I had 10 A's. Who is most qualified? The economy of this country is driven from the oil wealth. My mother's community has 24 oil wells. I shouldn't talk because of afraid of being killed. No, I'm not I'm more than that. Afraid of being killed, afraid of being imprisoned. No, I died long time ago. I died long time ago. I will have, I have died long time ago. This is a spirit talking. The real me died long time ago. And that brings me to the point. Most of us are under subtle pressure. We don't know it. When you are thinking of buying 10 liters of fuel for 10,000, I'm going to preach in a church now. I'm going to buy fuel of at least 10,000 naira to go there, to go to my elder's birthday ceremony. I might need to buy fuel of 20,000 to get to Sapele. That's just 20 liters. Maybe it would be better to add money to it and give to him than to travel there. My medical colleague, his wife and classmates to my wife, died in Lagos Ibadan Expressway from accidents. Bad roads, most likely. Two at Fly, uh, flight tickets, very expensive. I bought, we bought two tickets for 300 and something thousand in Lagos, my, myself and Abraham. Abraham paid. We are under subtle pressure. 
Every day my wife comes, let's drink tea. The tea will eventually land on my checkbook. I must sign money out. Pressure on her to pay the workers. The workers, the salary is not enough. It grieves my spirit. You will see them come and stand in the office just looking for money to manage. I can't increase the school fees beyond a certain limit. The parents are passing through the same pressure. So what's happening? People of my age bracket are collapsing and dying. A professor, my junior in medical in the uh, University of Ibadan, drove to lecture somewhere, drove back, said he doesn't know how he's feeling. Before they could attend to him in hospital, he died. Several people around me here have died. Pressure. You won't sleep well. No electricity. You are afraid of being kidnapped. You are afraid of one thing or the other. You are not sure of the next meal. Pressure. Under pressure. Under pressure. These musicians, you, they, they, they are prophets. Under pressure. I can't. Thank you, man. Oh, Faji Gule. I did. Nowadays, I take them more seriously. <laughs> I take them more seriously than pastors. Frankly speaking, I'm an ordained clergyman. The last messages and uh, music still relevant. Idris, everything jaga jaga. Nigeria has got a scatter. Still relevant. Obasanjo attacked him. Now Obasanjo is singing and that song. Um, poor man, they suffer. These boys are reasonable. They say things that we normal people are afraid of saying. So people are dying. As I talk to you, I feel very insecure. Not from police, not from army, not from somebody killing me. I feel very insecure. If something happens, Immediately, I won't have good health care. The next teaching hospital is in Ogara. Before you reach Ogara, you will die. Roads are bad. Then you see lousy policemen. They will stop one lousy thing in Delta State. They say they are checking for vehicle particulars. Some scruffy boys with sticks will be on the road. Is there no way? of getting a sticker you put on your windshield. That's how we did it in those days. Is there no way of renewing these papers, letting Delta State is this terrible, dirty, scruffy boys, terrorizing people in the streets because of vehicle particulars. And the monies they collect don't get to the government. You will see VIO, you will see Vigilante, you will see Hunter, you will see... Uh, um, Revenue people in the streets, primitive, particularly in Delta State. It needs to stop. The pressure is too much. Traffic, hunger, children's school fees. And so, Sorosoke, I go talk, I talk, I go die. I not talk, I go die. I talk, Pressure down on me. I no talk. Oh, pressure down on me. Keep your advice to yourself. My children are in the streets. My children are in the streets protesting for a better future that we protested for. They didn't see. And you want me to keep quiet? Continue. Don't advise me. Are you sabi? Leave me alone. I was just thinking. In the bathroom. You know, I've told my children, don't buy coffin to bury me. Don't spend my money on frivolities. Use it to give scholarship to people. If I die, play these videos. 2,000 something videos. Play them. People will know I contributed my little bits. I didn't build a refinery. I didn't build a cement factory. I didn't build big companies, but I left. I will leave truth behind. I'm not dying yet. I'm going to live to see a great Nigeria. Speak up.
act. Don't be a coward. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Don't give up the fight. That's the song of today. Nobody is sponsoring any person. The people are hungry. I have a seminar coming up on the 13th and on the 14th of September. Tagged Sustainable Development in Life, Ministry, Business, and Career. Send the message to plus 234-7052-136763. It's time to go for lunch. I remain Dr. Charles Apoki. When you send that message, I will send you a flyer. I have properties for sale. Remember the number? Plus 234-7052-136763. God bless you.